Today on Congressional Solutions, we're taking a step back and, well, having a little fun. I know lately Congressional Solutions have felt a bit like stopping a countdown clock at the one second mark in an action movie. In fact, scratch that, the government shut down and detention centers were handing out IOUs to employees. We probably hit that snooze button a few times on the bomb clock. Today, we're talking about one of the many solutions Congress debates that don't make it to the news. Specifically, the problem of exploitative microtransactions. That's right, we're talking about a bill proposed by Republican junior senator from Missouri and man whose photo is in the frames below where you put your photo with them, Josh Howley. I mean, the guy looks like Captain America if we had skipped just a little bit on the steroids. Josh Howley is probably going to be mentioned on future episodes of this show because he writes quite a bit of legislation relating to privacy and technology. The bill we're talking about today was designed to regulate certain pay to win microtransactions and the sale of loot boxes and interactive digital entertainment devices, or lawyers speak for video games, and for other purposes. That's right, every YouTube gamer says Congress needs to do something about loot boxes and microtransactions. Well, we did. Now it's your turn to call your representative and get them to pass this. So before we get to the solution, as always, we first need to talk about the problem. Because some of the older folks who watch this show might think microtransactions are the take a penny, leave a penny tray at gas stations. But how is a free-to-play game making over $300 million a month? Fortnite makes money by uh, selling microtransactions. If you've ever downloaded literally any game to your phone ever, you've probably seen a microtransaction. Guide your character through the tomb while avoiding the skeletons. Oh yeah, and the many, many terrific deals you'll get on all sorts of digital shirts and other items for your character. If your finger slips even one millimeter in the wrong direction, hey, you're out two bucks, but your guy can now do a jumping jack emote. As you can tell, this story hits close to home. While everything I've said so far is very annoying, it's quite a leap to go from this is annoying to this is a type of transaction that should legally be banned in the United States. This bill sets to address a more specific problem presented best by Jack Black? Man, this is a fun episode. It's in-app purchases where they get you, and it's this dumb game where you got like monsters and stuff, and every monster you gotta buy it, and you need to buy like diamonds Food. and jewels, and uh, it costs 99 cents for a diamond. But of course, my boy, he doesn't know. He's just like, I'm gonna get the big sack of diamonds. <laughs> It's a hundred bucks a throw. A hundred bucks! This game is designed for children. It's marketed to children. Yeah. And then there's a hundred dollar thing in app. <laughs> and there's 30, okay, do the math. There's like 30 receipts on my computer. So it's like, it's over, it's well over. 3,000, yeah. It's like 3,000. God, mother loving dollars. It turns out that kids can be high rollers when it's someone else's money. You type in the words kids, microtransactions, and parents' credit cards on YouTube, and you'll just be inundated with these videos of 500s of thousands of dollars in purchases. This specific act of targeting kids with microtransactions while they're young and dumb is what this act tries to address. As you can imagine, this is easier said than done. Because legally speaking, what makes a game a game for children? I mean, ask anyone old enough to be in the Senate and they'll probably tell you every video game is for children. These 20-somethings need to grow up and head into the coal mines or the factories. Interestingly enough, this is about the extent to which this piece of legislation defines a children's game, specifically defining them as any game where the publisher has constructive knowledge that any of its users are under the age of 18. Basically, forget Leisure Suit Larry, soon you might have to lie about being 18 to play Bejeweled. This legislation would, in fact, cover every video game from Animal Crossing to Mortal Kombat. Bet you never thought you'd hear those two games mentioned in the same sentence. 
Well, that's because you can buy mature rated games when you're 17. And after crunching an intense number of numbers, I can tell you that 17 year olds fit solidly into the under 18 category protected by this law. While this may all sound overwhelmingly broad, this bill only covers two specific and overly manipulative types of microtransactions, loot boxes and pay to win schemes. These are the business practices children are particularly vulnerable to. What my bill would do is it would say enough of that, enough of trying to addict kids to your business model in order to make money off of it. So the bill is very simple. It would prevent the practice that uh, video game companies use of forcing children to pay uh, for additional rewards in the midst of a game. Uh, this is an attempt to get them engaged in the game, to get them to spend their parents' money to keep playing the game so they get more time and more money. If this bill passes, there would finally be a legal definition of what loot boxes and pay to win schemes are, and they would both be banned from every game and app except adult only titles. So let's get to those definitions. First we have pay to win microtransactions. You know, in case you really like the game but just don't want to actually play it. These get broken into two subcategories, competitive games and progression based games. For competitive games, paying to win is defined as downloadable content that provides a competitive advantage. This means that you could plausibly see a court case where the prosecutor approaches the stand and says, <clears throat> Your Honor, the new grenade launcher attachment you can buy for Call of Duty is way OP, it's all get out. You can either nerf it or be served a federal trade commission injunction. Broadly, this would apply to anything you can buy that would give you a clear advantage over somebody else when playing a game competitively. But as Polygon speculates, do we get to the point where, somewhere in the future, senators are arguing whether or not a particular weapon or perk is overpowered and should not be for sale? Oh man, I never realized I wanted to see a senate debate so badly in my life. C-SPAN could live stream on Twitch. It would be like a YouTube comment section come to life. Lindsey Graham would say, Mr. Chairman, have you ever considered the fact that all these haters are just noobs who need to get good? Of course, Bernie Sanders would have to weigh in as well. <clears throat> the elite 1% are getting more than 90% of the kills on the back of the majority noob nation. We need to level the playing field. Kill streaks for all. The other type of pay to win on the chopping block are progression based games, where pay to win is defined as downloadable content that, from the perspective of an individual user, eases progression through such content, assists in accomplishing the game's goals, or permits a user to continue to access game content rendered inaccessible after the expiration of a timer or number of gameplay attempts. If this part were to pass, I think it would render every cell phone game unprofitable. The idea here is to ban any game that acts like a corrupt Port Authority official. Oh, it says here you want the Arbor Light, huh? Well, you're gonna have to wait 12 hours for that. Although, if you were to slide me a few big ones, eh, me and my boys could move a few things around, you know, shake a few trees, we'll see what falls out. No wait required. Of course, video games that make you wait for things would still be on the straight and narrow, as long as you can't skip the process by lining someone else's pockets. This brings us to the other type of banned microtransactions that tend to get a lot more attention. I no noticed that uh, the press release mentioned loot box practices. You know, what is that? A loot box is where, in the midst of a game, uh, the person who's playing the game, a child in this case, can pay additional money in order to get certain advantages within the game. It's sort of a hidden fee. These are games that usually are, are free or purport to be free. Okay, so he might not know what a loot box is off the top of his head, but don't worry, his legislation sure does. Loot boxes are defined as microtransactions offering randomized or partially randomized rewards for purchase. The controversial part here is you slide some money over to the gaming publishing company without knowing exactly what you're going to get back. 
It could be a digital shirt for your character, the same digital shirt for your character you got in the last loot box, a new map, a new gun, the possibilities are endless. Which unfortunately means no end in sight. Hey kid, why don't you give us another five bucks? Maybe this time you'll get the knife you wanted. This style of microtransaction has actually been classified as gambling in Belgium and is regulated in every major video game market except America. This legislation expressly gives exemptions to new difficulty modes, although it specifically says they can only be to make the game harder, so I guess pay to lose? That's all good. It also exempts cosmetics, so don't worry Fortnite, you can still keep teaching middle schoolers and ex vine stars how to dance for another day. And lastly, it exempts DLC, like new single player stories or weapons in multiplayer games, as long as those weapons are in no way better than the ones in the base game, so that's a bit of a hard sell. Now to the final piece of the puzzle, enforcement. Because you can write down a list of things you don't like until pigs fly, but unless you can back it up with the federales, well, you're stuck with a list of complaints. This act shall be enforced by the Federal Trade Commission under the Federal Trade Commission Acts Unfair or Deceptive Acts or Practices section. If someone doesn't comply, it would trigger a civil suit where, if found guilty, a gaming company would have to achieve compliance with this act as well as pay out damages, restitution, or other compensation on behalf of the residents of the state that filed the suit. Yeah, it's pretty intense. Interestingly enough, this bill actually has bipartisan support. It was proposed by Republican Senator Josh Howley and has the support of Massachusetts Democrat Senator Ed Markey, and a man who grew up thinking this was the pinnacle of gaming. It also has the support of Connecticut Democrat Richard Blumenthal. Well, it looks like every generation of Americans supports this thing. Now this is where things get interesting, because unlike the solutions I've talked to you about so far on this show, well, you could actually impact the outcome of this bill in either direction. Now I'm looking at you, person who has me open on another tab while you do work. The biggest reason this bill isn't moving is just the fact that the vast majority of Americans, not on YouTube, don't really care about this issue at all. It's not a partisan problem so much as a eh problem. So if you care in either direction, write your senator an email or give him a call about the Protecting Children from Abusive Games Act. I repeat, the Protecting Children from Abusive Games Act. Hey, no pressure in either direction. You're a free thinker. Some people like loot boxes, specifically the finance team at EA. I'll provide you a link in the description where you can find the name and website of your senator. Pro tip, if you google their name with the word phone written after it, you'll generally get their office's phone number. Also, they'll ask for your address to make sure you're a constituent, so make sure you have that info on hand when you give them a call. This call out especially goes to people living in New Hampshire, or people who know someone living in New Hampshire, because New Hampshire Senator Maggie Hassan has previously been a vocal critic of loot boxes to the Free Trade Commission but is yet to co-sponsor this bill. Also, share this video on YouTube, specifically in the comments section of videos complaining about loot boxes, microtransactions, and pay to win schemes. I know I will, but when I do it, it's kind of self promotion. To condense the last 11 minutes of film for people who actually want to make a call, this bill will ban pay to win and loot box microtransaction schemes in all games available to people 18 and under. It's referred to as the Protecting Children from Abusive Games Act and the way to contact your senator is in the description. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the left of my head. I regularly look at congressional solutions to problems facing America, so click here for more of those videos. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I really pay attention to that so I kind of figure out what the people who watch my videos like. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.